Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today I'm bringing you an update about the Lab 599 Discovery TX500. Now right off the bat, it's important to point out the TX500 has been delayed because of the ongoing global situation we're all living through. But that doesn't mean there hasn't been forward motion with the product and the project. So let's go through everything we know and take a look at the global community that's being built up around this interesting new radio. If you stick with me a while, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign narrative. So just to get it out of the way and say what we had all been thinking, the TX500 had been delayed. Now thanks to a recent update in PileUpDX's blog, we finally get some good news regarding the TX500. Now I'm not going to try to put some positive spin on it, but I will report to you what PileUpDX has posted on their website. Now in PileUp's blog post, they say the ongoing global problem we can't actually mention in this video without being demonetized is the reason for the certification delay. Now personally speaking, I'm pretty ticked off about global bureaucrats killing or stifling innovative new products. With that said, the TX500 is definitely worth waiting for. Now I do understand that's a tough sell for those operators who don't have another radio available to them to use while they're waiting on their TX500. If you go back and look at my very first review of this radio, I talk about it being the first rugged amateur radio for HF and 6 meters available to the amateur radio community. This radio fills a niche for a rugged radio which actually hasn't been filled before. We've all heard these stories about operators being too afraid to take their portable rigs out into the field because they're too delicate. Now this isn't a knock against other manufacturers, but it is a feather in the hat for a company who's trying to bring us an innovative rugged radio. So these are my own words, no one's telling me or paying me to say it. So if you're looking for a reason to wait a little bit longer for the TX500, that's it. There is no other rugged radio on the market. Now, PileUp's blog post goes on to tell us about some new features which have been added to the TX500 during the delayed certification process. So, PileUp's blog post talks about an improved audio recorder and playback functionality for SSB. They also talk about a 60 meter extension for the TX500, giving us the entire 60 meter band. They go on to mention the CW keyer for Lambda mode being perfected and improvements in CAT control functionality for WSJTX. Finally, they've added a CW memory keyer and made it possible to adjust the contrast of the screen. I'll leave a link to that blog post in the description of this video so you can go ahead and read any updates about this for yourselves. So now, let's go ahead and focus on the really cool stuff. So while we've been waiting for the certification of this radio in North America and Europe, it's not like the guys at Lab 599 have been twiddling their thumbs wondering what to do. And part of that time they used to build a battery pack that straps into the back of the TX500. Now this pack is a 3S2P lithium ion battery pack. Now the kicker here is we actually supply our own 18650 batteries. Now this is absolutely brilliant because many of us in the preparedness community already have 18650 powered devices like our flashlights. So it really isn't going to be that much of a stretch for us to source our 18650 batteries for this radio locally as well. Now here's another kicker. The input voltage for this battery pack is 12.6 to 36 volts. This means we can finally connect our solar panels directly to our radios. Now when I saw this battery pack, I thought to myself, wow, these crazy Russians have actually taken this well over the top. So let's go back to my first video for a moment. And if you remember, this radio has the lowest current draw 
of any HF plus 6 meter radio currently on the market today. We coupled that with a piggyback battery pack which takes 18650 batteries and a lightweight flexible solar panel like you've seen on the channel before to keep everything topped up. To be honest guys, this is the type of innovation I would have liked to have seen from Yezu when they introduced the FT818. So yeah, I think it's time to add the TX500 to our list of rigs which are off-grid friendly. Now at the beginning of this video I spoke about a community being built around the TX500. One such project comes from Oliver, Delta Lima 4 Kilo Alpha. He's put together a very interesting amplifier for the TX500 and other QRP radios, which has a built-in antenna tuner. Now the form factor of this amplifier is about the same as the TX500. In fact, it's designed to piggyback on the TX500 using their modular accessory interface. Now the amplifier itself is actually pretty innovative. It can operate autonomously, changing the bands or activating the antenna tuner, allowing the operator to focus on operating the radio. Of course, the amplifier can also be manually controlled if that's how you'd like to do it. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this amplifier, it's not only because it's a TX500 accessory, it's because I've ordered one for my hopefully soon to arrive TX500. Now, another reason I'm bringing up this amplifier for the TX500 is a change in methodology for my station. I'm primarily going to be using low power radios like the TX500, but I'm going to augment them with an amplifier if and when it's necessary. This means, generally speaking, no more QRO radios at my QTH or when operating portable. The idea here is actually quite simple. It's about the current consumption. I've already mentioned the TX500 has the lowest current consumption of any HF and 6 meter radio on the market today. Now, a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have believed what I'm about to say and I would have actually argued against it, but an amplifier with a low power radio is actually more efficient, more current friendly than trying to deploy a QRO radio, for example, the FT891 in the field. So that's enough about the amplifiers and this new methodology with low power radios. We'll come back to this topic in an upcoming video. So the TX500 also got a firmware update which helped an awful lot with rig and cat control. Data mode operators are going to be absolutely ecstatic about this. In regards to CAT control, the radio now identifies itself as a Kenwood rig and it's completely compatible with the Kenwood command set. So I have it set up now with my Windows Larkbox Pro Mini PC. I have it set up with the Raspberry Pi 4 and I have it set up with my Microsoft Surface Go 2. Now this is a heck of a lot easier than it used to be, so good job Lab 599. So this update has given us a very stable and reliable version of FL Rig functioning with the TX500 as a Kenwood. This means we also have JS8 Call, WSJTX, FL Digi, and I even have good settings now for Winlink Express. Now I think most operators looking at the TX500 are probably CW and SSB operators primarily, but for those of us like myself who want to run data modes with the TX500, this update was incredibly important. Now for those of you who have followed the WinLink series I've been working on, I've also got the TX500 working with WinLink Express at 2750 Hz bandwidth using VADA HF. After going through all of the Kenwood models, I decided on the TS590S. It seems to be the most stable, the most reliable, and the most compatible with the TX500. Now, for those of us using WSJTX for FT8 or Whisperer or whatever, as well as JS8 Call or FL Digi, you'll want to use FL Rig as the interface between the radio and the software. FL Rig is by far the easiest way to set up your radio for rig control, 
with a variety of different software packages, including FL Digi. Now, just like I mentioned earlier, we're using the TS590S in FL Rig, and that works on Windows and the Raspberry Pi. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is current consumption of this radio. Some of my patrons have asked, what is the maximum current draw with the cat control cable plugged in with an audio interface plugged in while decoding WSJTX or JS8 call? Now, with the TX500 and the Lark Box Pro or Raspberry Pi, that's anywhere between 300 milliamps and 500 milliamps. But you need to pay attention here. It includes both the radio and the computer. That would make this our most efficient off-grid friendly radio system we've seen on the channel to date. So who is this radio for? Well, now that I've had more time with this radio and I've had it in my hands, I can say the CW operator, the SSB operator are probably the primary radio operators for this radio. That's especially true if you want to do data modes as a secondary activity behind CW or SSB. Now the main attraction for this radio is probably its ruggedness followed up by its modularity. Now we've already talked about how little current it actually consumes, but that has to be a unique selling point as well. So it's off-grid friendly, it's got an excellent receiver, it's great with CW and SSB, but as a data mode operator, there's one thing which could be improved, and that's the CAT cable port on the radio. It's on the opposite side of the radio than the audio interface connection port. But again, most of us aren't buying this for its data mode capabilities. We're buying it because of its size, its ruggedness, and its off-grid capabilities. Anyway, not making excuses for it, but hopefully giving the manufacturer some ideas for future updates. Now, for those of you on the fence between the TX500 and the Yaesu FT818, there really is no comparison. The TX500 is a superior radio in every way, with the exception of lacking 2 meter and 70 centimeters. Filters and DSP are already included on the TX500, and the receiver itself after the firmware update is even better than it was in my original review. Not to mention the additional 4 watts over the Yaesu FT818. And for those thinking the Yaesu FT818 is a better value, it's not, because you still have to add the filters to the radio for CW, SSB, or whatever filter you like, but even then, you can only add a single filter. Now, in comparison to the ICOM IC705, these radios are really polar opposite, so I don't like to compare them. The ICOM IC705 takes an integrated approach in its engineering and design. The TX500 approaches its engineering and design from a modular and minimalistic approach. Now, what I will say is the design philosophy of these radios are polar opposites. But both of these radios are the most important updates to reach the ham radio community in quite some time. So let's go ahead and close down this video, guys. I'm just as frustrated as most of you are about the delay in certification. The good news is operators have already started receiving their radios. Now, I don't have a crystal ball or anything like that, but it looks good from this point forward. So I've collected a lot of content with this radio, but now I need to send it back to Pileup DX. This one isn't mine to keep. What this means is I'll be able to produce some more blog posts and additional content about this radio while I'm waiting for my own to arrive. But it needs to be said I'm incredibly grateful to Pileup DX for supporting the channel and for sending this radio over so that I can create this content for all of you. Now I do understand it has to be frustrating. It takes me a lot of time to do the research, the testing and the validation. Fortunately, when I'm given that time, I'm able to produce videos like this. 
This is definitely the quality over quantity approach. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at what we learned about the TX500 this time around. We received some pretty incredible updates to the receiver with the last firmware update, improvements with CAT control from the last firmware update, CW operators will be happier from the last firmware update. So there's definitely forward motion, guys. So I'll go ahead and follow up this video with a blog post specifically for the WinLink settings, the FL rig settings, WSJTX and JS8 call. Those settings were seen in this video, but it just makes it easier to find them when you search the internet if they're up on oh8stn.org. So finally, guys, please be kind to pile up DX. They didn't have to loan me this radio again, but I was pretty excited about getting more content out there. As far as achievements with the TX500 this time around, I was completely stoked about getting WinLink and VADA HF, even at 2750 hertz, up and running reliably with the TX500. So I guess the only thing left for us to ask and be answered is who do we have to intimidate to get this certification process going a bit faster? Rock and roll, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Ciao.